Who are you adding, dropping, or simply just viewing? This is all vital to your fantasy baseball success, right? They're viewing us right now. They are right now. This is a good thing. Welcome to the show. Lauren Shahadi alongside Eric Mack talking about Troy Tulowitzki. Why? Because he's hitting 373 with seven bombs in June. That's why, Mack. Yeah, Troy Tulowitzki, he has returned. He was the catalyst behind that huge second half in 2007 for the Rockies. They're on that kind of stretch right now. And it's because of Tulowitzki. He looks like a must-start shortstop in all leagues. And he looks like a top-five fantasy shortstop. The power is returned, and he might even be a 20-steal guy this season. Troy Tulowitzki is breaking through. Which was going to be my next question. Do you think he can hit 20? Yes. Okay. 25, well, there you 30. go. 25-30. All right. Let me ask you a couple of guys on this next list. Gonzalez, Bailey, Burns. When it comes to Bailey and Burns, all these guys really do triple-A numbers translate, Emac? Not necessarily. These guys are most added because they're hot. Triple A numbers and the potential for getting called up. Gonzalez will start this week. Bailey might start this weekend, and Burns will start this week. With Bailey, he is the number one prospect of those. He has outstanding potential, but he's been a quadruple A player. And what that means is great in the minor leagues, but he struggled in the majors. Maybe Hilmer Bailey can finally figure it out in the major leagues. Gio Gonzalez is the same situation, a strikeout pitcher, uh, left-hander. But he's also struggling in the majors. He's going to give it a try. Burns is more of a journeyman to me. But if any of these guys hit, they could be decent in any fantasy league. But you're more confident with Bailey. Are you the confident talent, yes. with Juan Rivera? Homered last night, kind of on a breakout of sorts, isn't he, Aaron? Yeah, Juan Rivera has been uh, the source of power behind Torrey Hunter and that Angels lineup with the career dissension of Vladimir Guerrero. Rivera, to me, looks like a must-add in mixed leagues right now. He looks like a must-start. And then you go further down that list. Michael Kadire is back. Jason Frazier is the closer temporarily for the uh, Blue Jays. And Nick Blackburn has been the ace of the twin staff. All right. These are guys that you want to add. What about on the other end of the spectrum? I'm talking about Jeremy Hermita. We're going to talk about him for a second in his last five games because, guys, they are brutal. 0 for 16 since Sunday. Right. Bit of a lull. More than a bit of a lull. Yeah, Jeremy Hermita is dropping like a rock. Um, he's notoriously a streaky player. You know, there's a lot of potential there, and there's times when he looks like a world beater, but you're going to have to be on the lookout with him because he's a high-maintenance guy that goes on tears and then goes in wild slumps, and this is one of those times that he's in a wild slump. I don't think you can trust him every week in mixed leagues. And you can't trust obviously. Coco Crisp either, obviously, because of that season-ending shoulder surgery, right? Yeah, Coco Crisp goes down. It was too, a little bit too bad, too, because he's off to a great start in his first year with the Royals. And then you got Ryan Matson struggling as the closer, and Brad Lidge is coming back. you got Josh Altman perhaps going to DL. Uh, Gio Gonzalez, like we mentioned, will be taking his rotation spot. And uh, Jeremy Hermita, obviously, dropping like a rock. Before we go, I want to touch on kind of a touchy subject, which is Carl Crawford on the trading block. Streaky. We've talked about right. this before, but is he too useful to right. bench, really? Yeah, I, I, don't know why, I don't know why people are jumping off the Carl Crawford bandwagon right now. He's been trading in the past two weeks in 411 leagues. Crawford, to me, was the number one fantasy player in the first two months of the season. He has a two-week cold stretch, and you immediately jump off his bandwagon. He's 27 years old in the prime of his career. He was also 27 last year at the end of last year and had a bad year, but this is his uh, market correction. And Crawford, to me, can be a top 10 fantasy player and a number one outfielder. I think he's going to get hot again. Bank on. Is he going to be 27 next year? No. <laughs> well, the middle of last year. I this know, I get it. Jump on the bandwagon. <laughs> He's on it. Hope we helped. For Eric Mack, I'm Lauren Shahadi. Thanks for watching.